It's a terrible time for our country. Uh, I don't think in all of the years our country has ever been so humiliated. I don't know, would you call it a military defeat or a psychological defeat? There's never been anything like what's happened here. You can go back to Jimmy Carter with the hostages. We all thought that was a great embarrassment and we were pulled out of that by Ronald Reagan. This is uh, many, many times worse. This has been the most humiliating period of time I've ever seen. Think of it, 42 billion. I understand Russia spends 50 billion a year for their entire military. We were spending 42 billion, not 1%. They were saying 1%. That's a lot of nonsense. We're spending $42 billion a year on defending this for years and years. We've been there really now, not 20 years, but 21 and a half years. And we get nothing out of any of these things that we do, whether it's them or many other countries I could tell you about. I'm not going to insult anybody right now. But to spend that kind of money and then to have people get on shows and say how inexpensive it was. And I have to tell you also that we lost no soldiers in the last year and a half because of me and because of the understanding that we had. We lost no, think of that, in Chicago and in New York and in other cities in the United States, many people die every weekend. We lost no soldiers in Afghanistan because they knew I wasn't gonna put up with it. And that's what happened. So we had a very strong conversation. We shouldn't have been involved. It was a horrible decision going into the Middle East. And I know the Bush family will not be happy, but I believe it was the worst decision in the history of our country when we decided to go into the Middle East. It's turned out to be quicksand. We've destroyed the Middle East. Do you think it's better now than it was 20, 21 years ago? It's much worse. It was a horrible decision. It cost us trillions of dollars. And, and if you look at both sides, because I like to look at both sides, millions and millions of lives. And it's no different than it was. It's much worse because you have to rebuild it. It's been blown to pieces. The worst decision ever made was going. But think of what's happening now. I've heard as many as 40,000 Americans and the Taliban, good fighters. I will tell you, they're good fighters. We have to give them credit for that. They've been fighting for a thousand years. That's what they do is they fight. The Taliban has circled the airport and who knows if they're going to treat us right. Frankly, Biden didn't have to even go by that agreement. He could have done. Look what he's done to the border. We had the greatest border, southern border, in the history of our country. We stopped drugs. We stopped human trafficking. We stopped people from coming in, prisoners from coming in. Now you'll have, I mean, you have the worst people in the world. They're emptying their jails into our country. This is like the southern border but it's handled even worse. Nobody handled the southern border worse than him. We had the most secure border we've ever had, and now we have by far the worst border we've ever had. Well, Afghanistan is the exact same thing. By the way, I'm America first, okay? The Americans come out first, but we're also gonna help people that helped us, and we have to be very careful with the vetting because you have some rough people in there, but we're gonna help those people. But can you imagine? Now, what we were gonna do just very quickly is we were gonna take the military out last, okay, last. The people were coming out, they were gonna come out, but the agreement was violated, so I held things back because we weren't gonna do anything, again, conditions-based.